Maddie from Drippy DIY Resin Art Kits and today I'm here to show you how to make a resin art cheese board using your Drippy kit. In your Drippy kit you get everything you need to create a resin art masterpiece at home. Your kit contains 480 mils of epoxy resin which is enough resin to coat about three cheese boards and 12 coasters or you can paint a canvas that's 50 centimeters in diameter. You also get your choice of pigment palette. Today we're working with the Ocean palette. You also get a large measuring cup to measure out your resin. You get a pair of uh, nitrile gloves. You get six little mixing sticks, two large mixing sticks, six little mixing cups. You also get an instruction card and a safety data sheet as well. Our kits do not contain a surface for you to resin because we like to leave that up to you to decide whatever surface you'd like to create your masterpiece on. Other things that you might need to set you up for success when you start your resin art journey is you're gonna need your surface of choice. So today I've chosen a square cheese board. You're also gonna need a, a solvent based cleaner. So you could use methylated spirits, acetone, nail polish remover, um, alcohol. This is just gonna help us clean up any resin spills along the way. You'll need some paper towel to help you wipe up any spills. You'll also need some spare cups or even tin cans is great because you wanna be able to raise your board up off the table to make sure that it doesn't just sit in a pool of resin while you're working. You're also gonna need some sticky tape and some scissors, particularly if you're working on a cheese board because this is gonna help us protect the underside of the board from getting resin drips stuck all over it. And then we're also going to need a paintbrush and some priming medium or you're going to need some sandpaper if you're going to work with a pre-varnished cheese board. With our cheese board today I've chosen a pre-varnished board which is great because it means that we don't have to do any extra work to finish the board once we've created our resin artwork on it. However, because it's not porous it's not going to really um, have the resin stick so well to the sides of it. So when you're working with a pre-varnished surface at home, it's best if you can sand the area that you're going to be applying your resin before you start doing your resin, just to help the resin stick to it a little bit more. However, if you don't have the time or energy to sand the board, I know I don't, I like to prime my board with what's called a clear gesso. So it's an artist priming medium and it just gives the board a little bit of grip so it helps that resin stick a little bit better around the sides of the board. So first things first is we're going to tape up the underside of our board to protect it from any resin drips that might drop underneath. So I'm going to flip my board over and just with some clear packing tape, I'm just going to tape off the edges of the underside for where I want my resin to go. So I'm only going to cover this top portion and the handle with resin. So I only need to tape about a third of the way down my board and the handle. So because I want to keep my hanging hole visible, I've just gone and cut the tape out from where that hole is just to make sure my resin can drain through so the hole remains. However, if you wanted to fill in your hanging hole, just keep the tape over the hole and the resin will plug up that hole so it won't be there once the resin's cured. So now I've got my board propped up on my cups, it's time to use the gesso to prime the surface. However, if you've got some sandpaper at home, I'd recommend just sanding the area instead of using the primer. I'm just going to squirt a little bit of this out onto the board. And then with a paintbrush, I'm just going to spread it on roughly in the shape that I want to do my resin design in. So I'm going to do maybe a little bit of a wavy line. So now we've got our gesso painted on our board, 
You want to do it thick enough that you can see where it is, but you also want it to be able to dry before you go and put your resin on your board. So you don't want it too thick that it takes a really long time to dry. So now it's time to get started on creating your resin art. So what we're going to do first is decant some of our pigment into our little mixing cups because you don't want to mix your resin up first and then have it begin curing whilst you're still figuring out what colours you'd like to do. So organise your colours first and then we can mix our resin together. Because we're using an epoxy pigment paste, it's a really high quality, highly saturated colour. There's about 40% pigment in these pastes, so we only need a really, really tiny amount to get super vibrant colours. Awesome, so now that you've got your colour in your mixing cups, it's time to measure out your resin and mix it together. So for this board, I'm only going to need about 100 mils of resin. So I want to mix 50 mils of part A and 50 mils of part B. Part A is our resin and part B is our hardness. So it's really important to make sure that you measure these really precisely because if you don't mix enough part B into your resin, your resin may not harden. So now I've got both my part A and part B resin measured out into my cup, it's time to mix it. So you want to mix with your large mixing stick and you want to mix for about a minute or two just to make sure that all of that resin is mixed in really well together. You also want to make sure you scrape the sides really well and get right down into the bottom corner of that mixing cup. So now that we've got our resin thoroughly mixed, it's time to pour it into our colour cups. This can be a little bit of a scary moment because you've got to commit to how much colour you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour it into my colour cups. I think I want a little bit more of the dark blue colour, so I'm just going to make sure I put a bit more resin in that cup. Now I have decided that I don't want to use black in my design today, so I haven't used one of my cups. Um, you don't have to use all of the colours in your palette if you don't want to, it's totally up to you what you create. So now we're going to mix our pigment into our resin and you just want to make sure that pigment is really thoroughly incorporated into the resin um, because if you have any blobs of pigment that aren't mixed, aren't mixed into resin and they wind up on your board, uh, you'll just get colour everywhere. So now we've got our colours all mixed up, it's time to start pouring. So I'm going to do an ocean design on my cheese board today and I quite often like to go from darkest to lightest and then have a wave right at the edge there. So it's kind of like going from the deep end to the shallow end. So I'm going to start with my darkest colour first, which is my dark blue. And I'm just going to go ahead and pour this along the edge and up around the handle. Okay. 
And then just keep pouring your colors and layering them in a gradient. They don't have to be super defined in their gradient. A little bit of overlap is good. When your colors uh, sort of lay over one another, that's when we start to get some really cool textural effects like cells and lacing. Because when the different pigment densities interact, that's when the magic happens. So don't be too neat with this. Plus, an ocean is never a perfect gradient anyway. There's always going to be some shallow spots, some deep spots, maybe a sandbar. Okay, so we've got all of our blues down on our board. We want to do a little bit of blending at this point before we go and add our wave detail. Otherwise, if we do our wave now and then blend our colors to patch up all of these blank areas, we'll ruin that beautiful wave effect that we've uh, worked so hard to get. So just in long sweeping motions, just give the colors a little bit of a blend. You don't want to mix them together too much. So we've got the top of the board covered. We can worry about covering the sides in a little bit, but now we can do our wave detail. So I'm just gonna do a nice big line right at the end here. And then I'm gonna do another wave coming up along this way as well. Maybe a little bit here. Awesome. So, We've got a few options now for how we can get the wave details happening on our board. So option number one is you can scan that white resin back over the blue with your Puddle Pop stick. This will give a really nice light white layer that spreads over the blue. So when we add our heat to this, it's really going to make all of those crashing wave details appear. Another option is you can actually blow your resin to disperse it a little bit. Or if you're not so good at blowing or you don't want to get your hair caught in your resin, you can actually use a hair dryer to push the resin up. So now that we've got our crushing wave effect, we can work on perfecting the sides. I don't like to waste any resin, so I just like to scrape it off of my tablecloth and paint it on the sides. And as the resin starts to cure, it gets a lot thicker and stickier. So it'll actually stick to the sides a little bit better if you just keep working with it as it starts to cure. So it's a little bit of a um, back and forth process with getting the sides covered. design is looking pretty good and you're feeling happy with it you do need to hit it with a little bit of a heat gun you can also use a blowtorch or if you don't have either of those handy you can use a hair dryer on a hot setting but a low um, blowing power speed setting <laughs> um, so I've just got a hair dryer here and I'm just gonna put it on the hottest setting and the lowest power 
I'm just going to scan the hairdryer over the resin just to pop any little air bubbles that are caught in the resin. Uh, these will release on their own eventually, but it's just good to add a little bit of heat to help it along. Adding heat is also going to help your pigments interact even more, and so you're going to get all of those cool cells and lacing details popping out. bubbles uh, you can keep going with your board if you feel you want to keep changing or adding anything um, I'm feeling like I've got a lot of white going on here so I'm actually just gonna come back through and add a little bit more blue just to uh, oceanify it a little more Now we've got a little bit more of an abstract ocean design, but I think it still looks really great. Um, and as the resin begins to cure, it will sort of move and change a little bit. But as those pigments sit there, they'll start to react and create some cool cell details. So it'll just keep changing for the next sort of 20, 30 minutes, which I think is great because resin sort of has a mind of its own um, and it'll sort of do what it wants in a weird way, but it always turns out looking awesome. So now you just want to let your resin cure. So it'll take, from the moment that you mix your resin together, you have about 40 to 60 minutes to work with it before it starts to cure. So I've probably been doing this for about 20 minutes now, so it's probably going to start to cure in about another 20 minutes. And then you want to leave it alone in a dust-free room. Um, it needs to cure for about 10 to 12 hours before it's touch dry and then it's fully cured after 24 hours. So once your board is cured, you can then take the tape off the underside of the board. All of the little dried resin that gets stuck underneath the board will then just come flying off when you take that tape off and the back of the board will be clean and ready to go. So once your resin is cured, it is FDA approved, so it's food safe. You can eat off it. Just treat it like a delicate kitchen item, so just hand wash it with warm soapy water after you've used it. Um, and yeah, enjoy.